Okay, let's do our best to take a look at muscles of the head and face. Um, it might be a little bit tough with this video to see, uh, but at least I can get you to the general area until you make your way in the lab and actually get your hands on the model. Okay, so taking a look at this head then, when we're looking at, of course, you remember the bones of the skull from uh, A&P1, your frontal bone made up your forehead, and then on the posterior aspect of the skull, you had your occipital bone. Now we have a muscle that sits on the frontal bone and the occipital bone, and it's kind of, the, the, the muscle is connected together with this broad aponeurosis. So the whole muscle together is referred to as the epicranius. And if I call that muscle the epicranius, then I would call this belly, the frontal belly of the epicranius. I would call this belly the occipital belly of the epicranius, okay? You can't just name a belly on the practical. You'd have to tell me the belly of which particular muscle. If you chose not to call that the epicranius, you could call this one the frontalis, and you could call this one the occipitalis, and then you're good to go, okay? Now I have two circular muscles. I have a circular muscle that encircles the eyeball, and I have a circular muscle that works its way around the mouth. Both of those muscles are referred to as orbicularis. Around the eye, I have orbicularis oculi. Around the mouth, I have orbicularis oris, okay? And we'll take a couple, a look at a couple of the muscles that actually attach themselves to the mouth or the lip. First, I've got this muscle. You can see the fibers going in this direction here. This muscle connects to the inferior lip. And when it contracts, it's going to pull that lip down. This is your depressor labii inferioris. It depresses or pulls down the inferior lip. And you'll notice I have another muscle originating from the same area, but this muscle attaches to the angle of the mouth whereas the first muscle we looked at attached to the lip. If this one goes to the angle of the mouth, it's going to contract and pull it down. We'll call this muscle then the depressor anguli oris, or sometimes you'll see that called the triangularis, named after that obvious shape. Okay. Now I go to my superior lip, and I've got fibers you see here coming down and attaching to that upper lip. If this muscle contracts, it's going to take the lip and elevate it. This muscle is going to be referred to as my levator labii superioris. Now, one of the tricky things with the face is many of these muscles have multiple bellies. And you don't have to know the multiple bellies. Just name that muscle. You'll see that part of this muscle goes up alongside the nose. And again, we can get more specific and call that the levator labii superioris aliquinasi, which tells you it's along the ala of the nose. But how about we just drop it for the practical, call this whole complex here, levator labii superioris. Now you remember your cheekbone, or your zygomatic bone. I've got two muscles that go from the cheekbone down to the upper lip. We have a zygomaticus major, and we have a zygomaticus minor. Of course, the major is bigger. On these models, it's very hard to distinguish between the two. We're just going to look at this muscle and call that the zygomaticus and be done with it. Okay? And then this little muscle here that comes off the back, going posteriorward off the corner of the mouth, that muscle there is referred to as the rhizorius, or the smiling muscle, because when you contract, that's going to take the angle of your mouth and pull it backward and upward. So real quick, muscles of the face, my frontalis, my orbicularis oculi, my levator labii superioris, my zygomaticus, my rhizorius, my orbicularis oris, my depressor labii inferioris, and my depressor anguli oris, okay? We come over here to the lateral aspect of the jaw or the mandible, and I've got this real strong, powerful muscle that comes down to insert into the angle ramus of the mandible there. That muscle is your masseter, okay? Masseter per square inch generates more power than any other muscle we have in the body. And then what you see posterior to the masseter, this is one of your salivary glands. That's your parotid gland with the parotid or Stenson's duct that goes across that, okay? And I think probably the last muscle that we'll take a look at in this model is a, mu is a muscle that's called the sternocleidomastoid. And that muscle is actually better to see in lab when you take a look at our complete torso model. But as the name suggests, it comes from the sternum, clido, meaning clavicle, and it's going to work its way up to insert into the mastoid process. When this muscle contracts, it's going to bring the mastoid down towards the shoulder, and it's going to cause your neck to laterally flex to the same side and to rotate to the opposite side. 
spastic contraction of this muscle we refer to as rye neck or torticollis, and we'll talk about that in class a little bit. So that's a pretty quick overview of face muscles, okay? And uh, that'll do it for us.